have looked into the uh, two topics where it says God is real. You remember? There was a message that was shared <coughs> probably last month, I guess. Uh, last month, God is real. Then we see hell is real. Yeah. So now we have to see heaven is real. So this message will bring a lot of comfort and hope and it will also help us uh, understand what we will do in heaven. Okay, like any other uh, activities on the earth, we also have activities in heaven. Amen? Excited or not? Why is it so sad? Why heaven? Anybody knows about heaven? Okay, heaven is real. So we read in the scriptures that uh, in Genesis it says in the beginning God created the heavens. So in the, in the KJV it says heaven, like singular, it is actually heavens because in Hebrew it's Shama Im. Im means plural. Shama Im, heavens. Which means there is more than one heaven. Heavens means, which, is, which, which means there is more than one heaven. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God created heaven. So heaven is a created being. It's a created place. It's not an eternal, as in the sense from eternal, in eternity past. It does not have eternity past. It has been created. It also says, in the beginning, God. Okay? The idea where the Bible says that God lives in heaven, doesn't mean that God is limited to space. Before heavens were created, God was there. So where did God live? In other words, everything lives in Him. Heaven lives in Him. The only for our minute brains, the writers are writing that God lives in heaven for our understanding, so that we are limited in our, you know, brains, in our thinking, or so. That's why it puts that God lives in heaven. The moment we say God lives in heaven, you're confining him to space, which means he's not eternal. God is eternal, right? Scientists, that's why they say the space is increasing. It's going in a speed where it is not stopping. It's expanding. How many of you know that? Space is expa expanding. Why? Because God is eternal. There is no end to expanse of heavens. Okay? You getting this? So don't don't get into that picture where Jesus is actually or God is actually lives in heaven. No, heaven lives in him. Everything lives in him. He does not live live in heaven. It is just for understanding. And uh, most of the times, God uh, in His mercy limits Himself so that we can see Him and we can commune with Him. That's why it says, uh, you know. In the cool of the day, God walked with Adam to commune with him. Because God limited himself. Okay? That's why God limited to become even a human being. Jesus. So that is that is the scripture that says in the beginning God created the heavens, which means more than one heaven. You will see that, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 8, and God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning where the second day. You see, it says evening and morning. Normally in you know in, in this modern era, what do we say? Day is morning, right? The beginning of the day is morning, right? But for the Jew, even till today, even after evening six o'clock, the day begins. For us, after twelve, it will be tomorrow, Monday, right? For them, Monday has already begun. Because after six. When you understand this, that's when you will understand the three days and three nights Jesus was talking about when he will be resurrected. Because he, you need to follow this pattern. Evening and morning. That's when a full day is coming. Not morning and evening like our Gregorian calendar like no, no, no. Okay, Jews follow like that. That's how Jesus, not Jews, it is actually biblical way. Okay? So the firmament is nothing but the atmosphere. That is the first heaven. Where you can see the clouds and the rainfall, that is the first heaven, the atmosphere. Even in James it says 5.11 And he prayed and the heaven gave
gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. The atmosphere is the first heaven. The second heaven, you can read it in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to 18, where God is creating the stars and moons and all the great planets and this and that. That is the second heaven, which is like outer space. Space, then outer space. Am, am I clear so far? That's what even the Psalms say. Psalms 8, verse 3 to 4. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars thou which have ordained. You see? Where the moons and the stars are there, that's one of the heavens. And that's where the battle begins. The second heaven is the battle where the demonic spirits, the spirits of the air, is uh, stopping all the blessings of Christians, all the curses are being blocked, blessings are being blocked, just because of that one area. Okay? And the third heaven is where God's throne is. That's what Paul said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 to 4, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out, out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such and one got up to the third heaven. You see? Got it? Three heavens. He said in third heaven, which means we have second and first, right? That's when third comes. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise. Now that third heaven is known as paradise. And I heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. He heard words in that place, in that third heaven, that is your and my home in future. As I am talking right now, they are people, my father who died, Three years from now, or in three years past, he died. He is now in that place. Talking, walking, speaking to his people, probably eating, roaming around, don't know what all he is doing. Even, not only my father, even uncle's wife is in that place. That is the place. Okay? It's paradise. You will see that. Many more things. You will be shocked to see some of the details. Okay? Or Yana's father. If you, if you are thinking some of some of your believing friends or you know friends or family members die, where are they? They are in this place. And heaven is not a place of clouds. Like we you know always uh, picture eyes, you know. Heaven is not a smoky thing, a cloud flow floating here and there or some, you know, a piece of a cotton flowing here and there, you know. That is not heaven. Heaven is a real place. It's like the planet Earth. It has mountains, it has trees, it has rivers, it has animals. It is more real than the real. This earth will not be seen forever. How many of you know? The earth that we are living right now, everything that you are seeing, even, even this thing, the chairs that you are seeing, the clothes that you are wearing, everything will be vanished from you. The present heaven and the earth are destined for fire, the Bible says. They are reserved. Reserved means already written. It's just that the day has not yet come. In, in other words, in, in other scripture it says, what we see is temporary. This earth is temporary. Heaven is permanent. That we, are, we are not able to see right now because we are living in this temporary world. Once this is moved, we will see the permanent world. Amen? Amen? Amen. Wait, what are you? Don't want to go to heaven? Want to settle here? Now I just put this pictures, you know, don't think that, that is the heaven. Just to bring that feeling. Okay. Isaiah. Now, heaven has a location. Like I said, heaven is a real place. Like you can feel everything. Heaven, you can feel things there. Okay? And this location is in the north. Did I say it right? Huh? Heaven is in the north. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Okay? It says, Isaiah 14, right? Uh, the follower of the Lucifer, it says, How art thou fallen 
from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. You see? Why north? Because that's where God is, uh, you know, dwells. That's where he dwells. The throne of God is on the north. Still not yet come. No. Okay. Convinced? Another one. Psalms chapter 75 verse 6 to 7 it says, For promotion does not come neither from uh, east nor from the west not from the south, but God is the judge. You see, one of the things he's saying, promotion, promotion does not come from east, west, nor from south. What is missing there? One, why did he not mention north? Because it comes from north, it comes from Lord. So, God is the one who gives promotions, right? So that's why he does not mention the north, because God is at the north. So heaven as a location. Now we can figure out where is that north, whether upward right from here. Because east and west, you can say the uh, the sun rise and the sun set. If you can figure it out, probably you can figure it out where heaven is. Now Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Mansions. You know, this is, what is this? We are right now in. It's a building, right? It's a building, probably you can say a single story building or double story building, whatever. It's a building. And here Jesus is talking that there are many mansions in heaven, which means it's just a physical place. It's not a spiritual mansion he's talking about. He's talking about a physical mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to a, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you and for me. So next time you can say to your people, you know, someone is coming to your house. Uh, did you, uh, where, where you're working? What did you buy? Do you have a house? I have mansions in heaven. Yeah, that's what Jesus said. I, I have I go to a play, prepare prepare a place for you and if I go to a prepare prepare a place for you I will come back come and again I will come again and I will receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also. So this place is not just a place like a cloud, spiritual smoke, no, it's a real place with real buildings, real walls and real gates and bars and everything else. Okay? And one day you and I will be in that place. He's, he has gone and he's preparing a place. Jesus said, He is preparing that place. Right now, as we are talking, He is preparing that place. Amen. Okay, in, in the Jewish community, or uh, if, if you read, you can just go or you can if you have any Jewish people in their tradition when they <clears throat> when they plan for a wedding, okay. When the guy is ready for the wedding and he's trying to go get his bride, the bridegroom, before getting the you know the bride to his house, he has to go and prepare a place with the father. And once the, the place is prepared, the father will give a sign that go and take bring the bride. Getting this? That's what the scene here. I will go and make prepare a place for you. Okay, and if I go, I will also come back and take you, receive you to myself. Talking about that, you know, the church, Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is bride. Jesus will come and take them. The Father is the one who will just ready, you can go. That is the rapture. Okay, the marriage of the Lamb. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17, it says uh, comforting words. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. He's talking about believers dying. We all die one day. And most of us, most of our family members and friends have died already. He's telling concerning them, you do not 
you know, do not supposed to be worried about, okay, it says, so that you do not grieve like the rest of the mankind. Rest of the mankind means someone who is not a believer, who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus, Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that we who are alive and, uh, and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet to meet the Lord, and the next it says, so we will be with the Lord forever. So he's saying people who has already died, if you know people who are died, you know, Christians who died, and you have grieved that you are not able to see them, the Bible says you are not supposed to grieve so much, because you will see them face to face as you did, you know, while you were on this earth. And that day is coming when Jesus will return to this earth. We will see them face to face. Even in future, maybe some of our family members might die. Okay, keep this in mind. Don't this thing go get into depression and cry, why did God do this? No, they have taken them to a better place. And we will join them. Yeah? This is not, earth is not the final destination of, of Christians. The final destination is heaven. So we are preparing. So that's what it says. Do not grieve like them. Do not be in pain with people who do, who do not know Jesus. This is what Abraham said. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of the promise and it as in a strange country dwell, uh, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the hires with him of the same promise. For he looked and for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. See, this place has foundations whose builder is God. An eternal place. You see, when Abraham was walking, God promised him, right, I'm going to give you a land for you and for your people. But yet when, when he was living, he never received that promise. Why? Because that is not the location. The location is there. Because one day that heaven location is going to come on this planet Earth. How many of you know? The heaven itself will land on Earth. How many of you know? No? Jesus will rule for a thousand years and we will rule with him. Yeah? So Abraham by faith he believed not the vacation right now, we have the Holy Land, not that one. He was thinking about heavenly country. That's what it says. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So heaven, there, in heaven there are different cities. One of the cities is known as the city of God. Okay? Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 to 53. I just love reading this. I just cannot imagine, you know, how, how those people have, you know, experienced. It says when, uh, when Jesus rose back, many people rose with him, right? That's what scripture. Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 to 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. People who died, before the resurrection of Jesus, okay, godly people, saintly people, they rose back when Jesus rose. How many of you know that? You, you have seen it for the first time? They rose from the grave and they went and met people. Imagine that. I just cannot imagine someone who is, you know, my grandfather or grandmother that I have seen, you know, some years back, now, now they are no more. They raised from the grave coming and talking to you, hey, I'm back. Just imagine that, you know, that joy. I, I don't know how many of you are sensing that, but I can just, you know, once, I don't want to share, I don't, I don't like sharing much, 
experiences, but I want to share in this case. Uh, once, uh, one afternoon, okay, I picked my mom. I, when my father passed away three years back, I picked my mom, I parked my vehicle. The moment I got down my vehicle, my father just, I just see my father saying like, hi Nelson, that's what normally he says like, hey Nelson, and he says that. Hey Nelson, and he says, and he keeps walking around. And I've seen him come like this, and he just vanished off the road. Okay? So that was one of the experiences I'm telling you. Heaven is a reality. You will see them as you're seeing me right now. You will talk with them. You will, you, once again, you will walk with them. Once again, you will eat with them. You will talk the same things. Maybe you know, my father was so, you know, me and my father were close, obviously. We, we were close. And the things that we share, we will share them again. If anyone you have lost your loved ones, the things that you remember about them will come again back. Same things they will talk, you will be with them again the same way. It says when they came out of, they went into the holy city and appeared unto men. Many, just imagine someone, great grandmother or great grandfather is saying, hey, I'm such and such great 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 grandfather of yours. You know, I, I died so many days back. You're my grandson. Just imagine they're coming and introducing to you themselves to you, how will that just, that will just blow your mind, right? But yet, this is the reality, we are going to see them. People who think that, you know, the world, things that, you know, people died and gone, no, no, no. There is a resurrection of death. The resurrection has already happened once there. Yeah? They will come back again. We only leave this body. Once we die, you know, in the second coming of Jesus or in the rapture, we can say, we will put on a new body which will never die, the Bible says, never die. Probably when I die, you know, I'll have a lot of hair when I come back in my resurrection body. Yeah, true guys, there will be no pain, there will be no sickness, the Bible says. Yeah? No eyesight, even eyesight will be gone, everything will be restored as God intended from the beginning of the creation. No sin, like Sam was telling, no sin, no death, no pain, you will never see hospitals in heaven, no funerals in heaven, no cemeteries, graveyards, nothing. Nothing, no pain. Even if you go and, fall, you know, let's say, even if you go and fall off somewhere that will not hurt you. Yeah, that is true. This is not supernatural. This is a common thing. It is a common thing for a believer. So in heaven we have angels, right now as we are talking, they are angels. In 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 19, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord I saw, the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on right hand and on the left. You see, as we are talking, there are angels. Heaven is full of angels in Numerably, in other words, we cannot count them. We cannot count those angels. There are so many of them, the Bible says. And most of the angels have been assigned to each one of us. How many of you know? There are multitudes of saints, as you know, we are, we are talking, there are people in heaven, uh, the number of believers and saints who have already gone are right now in heaven. It says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 10, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. You see, they were, you cannot number those people. So many people are there right now in heaven, of different nations, of all nations, kingdoms, and people and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with the white robes, and palm in their hands. You see, you and I will be given white robes when we go to heaven. <coughs> so that's what it says. Uh, we will be clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. Palms means palm branches. You see palms? Right here we have so many palm trees. Not those. We have heavenly trees. If we have palm branches, which, which means there are palm trees in heaven, right? So which means there are trees in heaven, they are physical, it's a physical place guys, it's not something like a cloudy, 
You know, clouds everywhere, hey, angels are sitting and playing harps. No, no, no. It's a real place. Heaven is a real place. And they cried and, and, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Is it? Right now, as we are talking, there are people, millions of people, billions, probably trillions, who have died and gone before us are right now in the in, in front of the throne worshipping God. And they're having a great time, better than, than us. What is that? Chariot. Yeah, chariot of fire and fire, hot fire, you can say, fiery horses. So we have animals which are fiery, horses which are fiery. In heaven, we have horses which are fire. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Brother Elia riding those, you know, fiery horses, Brother Sam and Joet, probably Sri Chaitanya. Even more faster than them. <laughs> yeah? And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, and behold, there was there appeared a chariot of fire. Chariot of fire, can you imagine? Chariot of fire. And horses of fire. And parted them asunder, and Elijah, Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. You see, it went into heaven. So they are, you know, animals, probably horses, maybe different animals. In this case, we can see horses, which full of fire, fiery horses. Fiery horses, just imagine. Now this is not, uh, I'm not trying to bring you Hollywood movie here, yeah? trying to show some animations, but these are true. Another scenario, okay, how many of you know, what is this? Any incident that comes into your mind when you see this? Elisha and one of his servants, you know, they were about to fight this war and the, the servant will be worried about the army. Okay? Second Kings chapter 6 verse 15 to 17 it says, And when the servant of the man of God, talking about Elisha, was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both the horses and chariots. He's talking about the enemy who surrounded them with, you know, horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us is more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes that he may see, and the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about the nation. So the servant was seeing the physical world and he was scared. Elisha was seeing the heaven full of horses and chariots, great army. Okay? So looking at that, they got emboldened. So heaven is full of horses and chariots. Probably you and I one, one day will be traveling in chariots maybe. <laughs> we don't know. But that's that's the mode of, you know, what do you say, travel there. There are many actually, if you read Ezekiel, if you read, uh, if you read Ezekiel, if you read Revelations, the different kinds of horses that is mentioned, right? Pale horses, red horses, um, different kinds of horses, black horses, okay? Now you can say, you know, that is just a, what do you say, uh, an allegory or something, like a type of trying to explain something. Yes, in one sense, but in another sense, there are horses. Jesus himself will come on a riding on a horse, yeah? In Revelation chapter 22 verse 4, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in, the, in their foreheads. You see? We see, we will see Jesus face to face, which means heaven is a place of fellowship with God. That is the primary thing. We will see him face to face. He will not be sitting somewhere up there and some big bold voice will come like that. No, he will see him face to face. He will walk with us, talk with us. Revelation chapter 22 verse 3 And his servants 
shall serve him. Which means there are service in heaven. There are different kind of works. What you do on this earth, based on that, God will assign you a work. Don't believe? It says Matthew 25 verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You see? Why? Because you have performed well here, God will give you responsibilities in heaven. Relating to his kingdom. So that's why it says we've got to be faithful in the finances that we deal with the things that we, you know, deal on this earth. Based on that, God will give you, you know, jobs in heaven. Luke, even Luke chapter 19 verse 7, 17, it says, And he said unto him, Well thou good, and good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, how uh, have thou authority over ten cities? You see, he was little, he was faithful in very little things and God is giving you, he's making them rule over many cities. Which means we will rule with God. One of the activities that we do is we will rule and reign with Christ. That's what the Bible says. In the thousand years, what, what is going to happen, we will going to rule. You know, me and Sam is talking when his mom was uh, admitted, how pathetic the condition was. You know, the hospital, even to take the stretcher, to give the stretcher, they were taking the phone as a deposit. Imagine to give a stretcher, even the, uh, they're not even giving the gown what they were wearing. Right? Gown, is that right? And in the op operation theater, they put a gown before they're operating. Even that is not provided. They're not providing that. Everything has to be brought by yourself. Even after the operation is done, the surgery is done, normally the, they only shift you, right, to the ward. We should only go and take such pathetic conditions. We were thinking that, you know, who will set all these things right? Only at the coming of Jesus. Jesus will set everything is right and we will also be with him if we are faithful in little things. Whether it is our job and this and that, if we are faithful in that, God will restore everything through us. The corruption will be gone. No pain, no corruption, no sin. And Jesus enters. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and hath made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. You see? Reign on the earth. Not heaven is talking about thousand years here. Reign on earth. We will rule the earth with Jesus. And that's when everything will set right. The corruption will be more. Revelation chapter 2 verse 17 He hath, he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches to him that overcometh, I will give them to eat the hidden manna. Eat the hidden manna, which means there is food in heaven. How many of you know? There is food in heaven. Yeah? No, you're not excited about food? You like fasting? You like fasting or what? Not excited about food? Jesus said, Mark 14, 25, Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of, of the fruit of wine until the day I drink in its new in the kingdom of God. You see? We have eating and drinking in heaven. Yeah? So don't think that we will not be hungry. It's not like hungry in the sense that we will crave, but it is a fellowship kind of eating. Okay? So that was my last verse. So Jesus, that's what Jesus reminded us that God lives in heaven and that is a home. Even in the prayer Jesus said, right? Our Father, who is in heaven? Who is in heaven doesn't mean that He is limited to the space. He limits Himself so that He can commune with us. Okay? Heaven lives in Him. In fact. Okay, so Jesus said, Do not store up things on this earth, but store up things in heaven where there will be no rust, no Moth, no thief can enter. Yeah? But here, if you're trying to build, you know, the kingdom of your own kingdom, trying to think that, you know, I was hearing recently, I was talking to my friend. 
His marriage got cancelled on one thing. The girl rejected his marriage. Why? Because the guy does not have a duplex house itself. Why? Right. The girl has duplex house. She rejected the marriage, the guy, because the guy does not have a duplex house. He has an own house but does not have a duplex house. Why? Because their heart is set on this earthly treasures. God is telling, we need to set our hearts on heavenly things, right? The Bible says, we are strangers here, we are citizenship is in heaven. The moment you think all about you know, this world is because your heart is not set in heaven. Amen? Amen? How many of you are excited? Do you want to go to heaven? Amen? No? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to settle here? Yeah. Which means, if you want to go to heaven, means you have to die first, right? You are willing to die? <laughs> so heaven is a place, right now as we are talking, Jesus is there. Our, you know, our friends and family members who passed before, before us are there right now, talking and moving around. You know, they are having a great time. Only we are the people suffering here. Okay? And God is expecting each one of us to be there. Amen? Amen? So let's bow down and you know, we'll thank God. I'm not doing well, but growth is going off. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to look into your scriptures about Jesus <clears throat> and to see what heaven is all about, oh, Father. Help us, oh, Father, prepare ourselves, oh, Father, oh, Lord, to see you in heaven. To meet you and to see you there, oh Father God, Lord Jesus, I pray that you are a Father. Bring this comfort into our hearts and minds, oh Father, that this earth is not the destiny of Father. This is not the last. For you have prepared heaven for us. We thank you that you have already gone, gone to this place and you have prepared this place and you are preparing things for us, oh Father. We thank you for that. We pray, help us, oh Father, to wait for you and to... And to uh, Believe and to take comfort in thy words where you said that you were going to come back and take us to that place. Help us not only to come to that place, but help us to prepare others also, Father, and to take this message of the gospel of God to people who do not know you, O God. We pray that you would, O Father, deliver people, O Father, Lord Jesus, from every bondage of God, every kind of um, disturbances and every kind of uh, doubts of Father God, Lord. I pray that you would, O Father, bring them this hope of eternal life of heaven, O Lord, of you, O Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.